All right, I went to the grocery store. Oh, the bucket was stuck to the carpet. If you're not aware, you can get dry ice from most, I think, large grocery stores. You just need to ask for it when you're at the checkout. And the cool thing about dry ice, and I'm gonna say the cool thing a lot, if I can just get that out of the way now, I can stop um, saying no pun intended, no pun intended. But the cool thing about dry ice is the way it reacts with metal. What happens when it touches metal is it, it, it makes the metal so cold that the metal shrinks, expands, when it gets warmer, shrinks again because it's so cold. And that shrinking and warming makes it vibrate. And that vibration is audible. And it's audible as a scream is the best way to describe it. So what I've got here on the floor are a bunch of different metal objects. Tuning forks, drying rack, this old heater with uh, some, some springs in it. I've got just some simple metal, like aluminum discs. I've got the other side of that metal heater. Metal spoons, a whisk, <laughs> a bigger metal disc. <laughs> One of these, you know, uh, now Jean. Is that how you say it? Water bottles? Yeah, the thing about dry ice is it doesn't melt. It sublimates, which means it doesn't leave water. Oh my God, that's so cold. Okay, so we're gonna talk safety here in a second. When it melts, it turns to a gas. What you see it doing here? You don't want to touch uh, dry ice too long with your skin because it will burn your skin or it'll give your skin the same um, damage as f as a flame would. So you can you know touch it quickly, um, but if you hold on to it, you're gonna be hurt. So I'm gonna not do that. As an example for what I was talking about earlier, the way it makes metal um, vibrate here. Now, now, once the metal gets cold, the effect isn't as crazy, but uh, yeah, here. But because this metal is so thin, it gets cold so fast, it stops vibrating. But here, I just warmed up with my hands. Yeah! Now I'm just gonna start experimenting with different metal things and seeing what happens. What happens if I just sit one on top of it? Nothing. Nothing is the answer. I'm going to move on to another thing. Uh, just spoons. Um. <laughs> Metal pig. see what I can get out of this. Um, an old heater that I disassembled.
I have a feeling this guy is way too frosted. Upside down. This is the other half of the heater. All right, goodbye. Shut the f up. That wasn't pleasant. I don't like that at all. I thought there'd be a bit more reverberation in the um, little whisk tongs. Maybe I need to get a bigger whisk. I think um, bigger whisks might make different sounds. This one, we... We've heard the sound it's going to make. Teeny tiny piece over here. You done? All right, board. better with little pieces. Good for tonight. You know what I'm going to do next? No, you don't because you're not in my head. So the next day, what I did is I took that hour and a half recording and I cut out all the best squeaks and pops and bangs and sizzles and crackles and everything. And then I organized them into folders based on the item. I've got 10 water bottle samples, eight dish rack samples, 30 of the heater springs, 34 of the metal plate, 14 miscellaneous 25 from the mixing bowl, 16 from the spoon, 53 from the tuning forks, and just six from that whisk. So that's about 195 sound files. Here's an example of some of the files that I've saved.
So if you're interested in downloading the full pack, it is now up on my Patreon channel. So please come on by and I will see you there.